he was very insistent that I start to get access to governmental documents referring to Britain's activities, Britain's interest in Chinese activities, yeah. either here or on the continent or in the elsewhere in the world, um, how we would be considering responding to uh, Chinese activities, that sort of stuff. Rao growing, alleged spying Rao. Look, to some experts and insiders, it was not hugely surprising to, to, to consider the, the possibility that China would like to have their own people sitting at Westminster, whether as researchers or potentially as, as MPs. Nonetheless, the story is astonishing. Yeah, it is astonishing because it's coming to light. And I think what we're starting to see here, John, and you've just alluded to it there, actually, is the way in which China has over time engaged itself in all areas of the UK, from politics to, you know, thought leadership, business, universities and students. And what really this tells you is the Chinese state has a significant interest in understanding how the UK works from the bottom up. We're not just talking about, you know, what you would usually think about when you think about spying, tapping someone's phone, hacking their email... We're talking about people at the start of their careers, as was the case with these two particular MPs, people who wanted to be MPs, they were removed from the candidates list, you know, that China was trying to recruit or potentially had already recruited. The idea was to get in at the ground level before they were potentially ministers or whatever they were going to be. And it's all about trying to ensure that the Chinese Communist Party's ideas and ideas about the Chinese Communist Party are what they want them to be. And I think that's what's fascinating here because it may well sound to lots of people like, well, what does it matter, right? These people had no power. These They weren't even MPs. They were going to be. But it does matter because China is gathering huge amounts of information about how this country works. And obviously they have a reason for doing that. Yeah, and they were looking for a place inside the political, mm. I don't know, the magic circle of, of Westminster. I don't know who they were or where they were sitting, or what chances they had of becoming MPs. But for all we know, they could have become members of Parliament, yeah. which would have been a, another question. And there will be, Kate, won't there, thoughts, at the very least, of, of the, the possibility, to put it no, no higher than that, that others trying to do the same thing got through the net. Yeah, and we know that actually this is not the first time that this group, the United Front Work Department, has been linked to people inside Parliament. You know, Christine Lee, who is now taking, actually, the government uh, to court over allegations that she was working with the Chinese state, um, she was potentially, the suggestion was she was linked with this group too. And, you know, I think what it does show you is that people now need to take a long, hard look at whether there are any links and whether those links are actually OK. You know, business links, universities, you brought them up. I know we're going to talk a bit more uh, in a bit more detail later on. But there are things called Confucius Institutes in lots of UK universities where, you know, China works hand in hand with researchers, with students, with businesses and technology to try and, and you know, further their own ends and and that at the moment is perfectly legitimate Rishi Sunak said he would remove them before mm. he was Prime Minister rode back from that in number 10 so mm. there is an element of this which is okay and is above board but there are elements of this so people will now in politics be thinking right we need to probably have a think and, and check properly what we've got going on here. Yeah, I mean, the Foreign Affairs Committee said really quite recently that, that China was as it were extending its its reach into all levels of British society. Now mm. stay with us uh, Kate we can both talk to Gawain Towler who's a former director of communications for, for UKIP, the UK Independence Party, and, and you'll see why. Because, Gawain, you then have experience of China's efforts to recruit spies. Is that correct? Tell us about that. Yes, that, that is entirely correct, John. Um, good to see you again. Um, it's, um, yeah, I, it, very simply put, and I know there was reporting about this a few weeks ago, about the LinkedIn approach. Well, that's certainly how they got in touch with me. Um, they dropped me a line. I... And we co corresponded for a couple of months before, um, and, and the, to be they wanted they were suggesting that I would become a uh, a public affairs uh, representative for some Chinese companies or companies based either in Peking or in Hong Kong. Um, and after a couple of months of chatting, quite seriously and sensibly, um, the suggestion was I'd have a final interview in Hong Kong. So. They were prepared to fund it. I was on universal credit. I wasn't going to say no to a few days in Hong Kong. Yeah. So I was happy to go. When then, Gawain, did it become apparent that this approach was really about getting you to be an agent for China and not really representing... Because the, there are people I, in this country who legitimately represent Chinese corporations, aren't there? Precisely. I, and, I, but I, you, I, were, I, you, were being asked, you were being asked to do something rather more and some, rather more sinister than that. Tell me about absolutely. that and that invitation. I, I am very, very much aware that... Uh, uh, the re risk and threat that China uh, poses our country. 
But I'm also aware that we do business as a country and business is good and trade is good. Um, so therefore, I was very happy to work with a Chinese firm uh, to further international trade. There's no problem with that. But uh, I think it was after halfway through the second day of the conversations that I had over there that it became when I kept on asking about meeting up with the people from the companies rather than the person who would my interlocutor on LinkedIn. Uh, and that kept being pushed back. And the conversation got more and more about the sort of information I could provide rather than uh, the sort of service I could provide. Um, I was thinking of my feeling was how to set up a strategic campaign to further the interests of a, of a company or business. And they were much more interested in this sort of people I knew all uh, constantly. They were drilling down on the people I knew mm. and what they did and uh, how I how I got on with them and how I knew them and uh, the, my my personal relationships with these people. And I thought, well, there comes a point which surely you're interested in the business strategy and how to impact on what you actually do rather than constant questions about the people mm. um, and the levels of access. And uh, But the, you've got to remember that at this point, I'm in Chinese-controlled Hong Kong. Um, I'm entirely beholden to them. And whilst my suspicions were rising and rising, there wasn't a great deal I could do yes. at, at that point. Um, so I, at this point, I, it was much more smile and nod and say yes, yes. than do, basically stamp my foot. I did make it clear. Uh, and the last day when the, uh, a fellow from Peking was sent down to talk to me, uh, and that was entirely through translation rather than uh, in English, um, that person was very, very insistent. Um, and, and the other two junior figures were obviously very scared of him. Yeah. Um, but he was very insistent that I start to get access to governmental documents referring to Britain's activities, Britain's interest in Chinese activities, yeah. either here or on the continent or in the, elsewhere in the world. Um, how we would be considering responding to okay. uh, Chinese activities, that sort of stuff. Okay, I get, I get the I get the picture. They were clearly looking, or seemed to be looking, for a a way to get hold of of, of, of intelligence, of political intelligence, rather than rather than simple yeah. contact on an, on with such sort a of thing where China's concerned. Of a simple contact on a on a commercial commercial level. Oh, but why why are you going with with no disrespect to your oh, value to a potential enemy of the country? Because I am such a charming, friendly, lovely sort of chap that everyone <laughs> no. Um, very good point. Why me? Um, I'm. I was at that time, 2018. I was well known. I was uh, well liked in Whitehall. I knew a lot of people in the special advisor level. Quite a few people at the junior minister level. Uh, I've been doing the game for a long time in Whitehall. Mm. Um, however, I was very much a a friendly face rather than an active participant at that point. Yes, yes. Um, as as you well know. I, well, I um, do. Look, go in. What would your view be of anyone who made themselves of, of use to a, a to a foreign potential adversary, whether it's China, whether it's Russia, or whoever it was? What would your own view of that be? Well, there is a rather large and hardly used castle near in the centre of London. I would say um, the Tower of London has not been used for a while. Uh, no, it's it's it, it is it is outrageous. It is disgraceful. But I do have, I do have a little bit of sympathy for the sorts of people as uh, as you were talking about just now. The sort of people at the beginning of their career, you know, um, how much people are paid uh, in the think tanks in the wonk world um, as assistants, as parliamentary assistants. Uh, in APPGs, in the in the all party groups in Parliament, the sort of things that uh, this person who was arrested has been doing. The entry wage is minimum wage. Yes. Or of your lucky. Well, I, I, I get what you're driving at, Gawain, but it would be nice to think that not any not anyone can be bought well, for, for no, money. I'm going to bring Kate in, Gawain. Bear with me, Kate. Mm, Kate McCann's yeah. here. I suppose my question really is, did you get, you said you got a feel for that they were asking who you knew. Did you get a feel for what kind of information they were actually after? Are we talking yes, about, I, are we talking about things like, you know, what, what's the government's thinking on this? Because that obviously is a job that exists at the moment. You know, people provide strategy advice or was it more nefarious? What, what kind of thing were they after? I mean, initially, what they were offering to pay me for was all stuff that was available in the public domain. But... Um, often hidden in plain view, and I knew where the index was. 
However, it became clear on the, day, the third day of this uh, interviews that um, they were after pre-publication documents about these things. They were after, and as, as I was trying to explain to John, the, what would the British official and unofficial reaction be to uh, a significant investments in Tanzania or something like that? So the, a multi-departmental response, be it the Foreign Office, be it Defence, okay. be it Trade, um, okay. What would be bottom the bottom line, Gawain. Up? I guess they were just after whatever they could, they could get. And, um, and, and Gawain Tala, thanks for joining us with that really well, interesting story.